Hey everyone, Michelle here, the Brave Homeschooling Mama. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. A little bit about myself. I am a special education teacher turned homeschool mom. I have two kids and I love to help new homeschooling parents by making videos about curriculum and day-to-day -day homeschool. So today I have a new video for you all, a video will kind of add on my comfort zone. So I'm going to be telling you three ways that you can give your child high school credit. Um, this is the new territory for me. I'm going to be having a ninth grader in the fall. So if you're interested in finding out three ways that you can give your high schooler credit, make sure you stay tuned. So a credit is given to your child once they fulfill their requirements that they need for a specific course or for an elective. That's how you, that's what a that's what a credit is. You can give your child either one credit for a class that's taken for a whole year, or if it's something that they do for a semester, you can give them half a credit. But the first thing they need to do before figuring out what you are going to be teaching your child, make sure that you know how many credits your child is going to need by the end of the twelfth their 12th grade to be able to graduate. Make sure you know how many credits they need for science, how many credits they need for history, for math, so you can plan accordingly. It's very important to figure this out first, how, how many you know, credits they need, how many credits they need for each class to be, then, then you can start planning what classes you're gonna be you know, teaching them, what kind of electives they're gonna have, so you're gonna help you with your planning. So there's three ways that you can uh, assign uh, your child credit or give your child credit for what they are working on in high school. The first way is through their you know, textbook work. Most textbooks, if they are from a you know, reputable company, they, uh, by, by, if a high school um, textbook by the end, when they're done with that book, you can assign your child one credit. That's based on the amount of work that they're going to be doing, the questions, the amount of time they're going to be taking by completing the assignments in the in the book. So once you're finished with 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 a textbook, you can count that as a credit. If it's a textbook that you're doing half, like you know, for for a semester, you will do give them half, you know, you know, half a credit instead of one credit. Um, it, may, it doesn't mean that the child has to do every single math problem in, in, in the book or every single question, every single activity, but do as much as they can so they make sure you, you know, they get the whole experience for, for, the, you know, for the textbook and then get everything they need. They recommend for you to give them, uh, for them, you know, to finish between 75 to 80 percent of the textbook to be counted as a credit. If you're able to finish it, the whole book great, but if you don't, make sure you have about 75 to 80 percent completed before you assign them, you know, the, the credit. So the second way that you can assign your high school their credit is by logging hours. Uh, this is when if you are creating your own curriculum, if you're gathering things from, you know, different places, if you're doing a curriculum that's integrated where you, for one curriculum, you're working on science and Bible and history. So you will log in hours depending at what, how much time they work in this, you know, specific subject and also for their electives. So you are going to be tracking the a reasonable amount of time that they're working through a subject. If you for more, you know, uh, core classes, so it'll be about 150, you know, hours of coursework a year. So that's about five times a week for an hour for, you know, 30 weeks. That's a way that you can count it. If it's a an elective, it could be 100, uh, about 120 hours of working in an elective, or or 60 will be, um, you know, half a credit. So 150. Um, about 150 for like more of a core class for one credit and also like you know for an elective you can do 120 hours for <clears throat> for one credit or 60 for half a credit another way that you can assign your high school a credit is by their uh, either college classes that they can take or you, you they can do dual enrollment they can uh, start taking you know, college classes or classes at the community college and they can count that as a high school credit um and they will also start you know, counting for when they go to to, you know, to college. Um, I know if you take a class of between three to five you know, credits in, in college, you can count that as one credit for high school. Or if they're taking a class at a, in a co-op setting or you know, like I'm sending my daughter in the fall to, it's not a co-op, it's more of a drop-off center. I'm just going to be taking a Spanish class for a semester. So I'm going to count that as half a credit for her. And if she takes another in the fall, and I'm sorry, in the spring, then I can count that as a one credit. So I'll figure that out. But if it's a semester class, you can give them, you know, you know half a credit for that uh, class. So these are the three ways that you can assign your child um, high school credit. You can either do it by textbook, 
by the you know, completion of a textbook, by logging hours, or by taking class in you know, college classes or classes outside of the home. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, I got a lot of this information from the SSLDA website. Make sure you go in there and, uh, and, and, and you know, check their website out. There's so much information in there that's only given to people that are members of SSLDA. There's you know, consultants and everything. So make sure if you're not a member to be, you know, become a member. I'll put the link below so you can check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, enjoyed this video, make sure you give that thumbs up. And also, if you don't follow me on Facebook and Instagram, make sure you do so for more homeschooling ideas and motivation. And I will see you soon. Bye.